Hello fellow crafters, this is Lynn Wilches, also known as Love to Cross Stitch. Um, I'm not doing cross stitch today, I'm sorry. But I am going to tell you about my beading, because I've had a lot of questions about that. Um, plus I wanted to show you, peyote beading is awesome. It, it's a lot of fun. It's tapestry beading is what I do. And I really enjoy it. Um, I've always wanted to learn how to do beading ever since I left Japan when I was in the sixth grade. And in case you haven't figured it out, I used, I've been doing crafts and stuff ever since I was probably second or third grade. Grandmother taught me how to do knitting, crocheting, blah, blah, blah. So not that you need to know that. So I got to the point where I, I really wanted to learn how to do beading. Japanese have beautiful patterns with their beading and they've made flowers with beads and and I remember all the things that the Japanese had that were beads that I just went crazy about so when a friend of mine who's also a quilter and who also um, helps us out with Quilts of Valor by quilting the quilts she did did peyote beading and she does beautiful work she does some some of her peyote beadings are um, of a lady with a hat and then there's ladies in fancy dress but those are those technically are not the ones that I'm really interested into I mean I like to do more things in the direction of funky uh, not funky um, funny um, nature so nature could be flowers trees birds and in this particular case um, polar bear so all those things are kind of fun for me to do and so when I got into this and I will agree that it is a little bit expensive so I started out working on these okay and each one of these there's three of them see this cat and that cat and that cat so as I worked on these I could after a while when I first started, I only got about a half. And then as I was going, I got about a third, you know, um, two thirds done. And as I was going, and the more that I understood what I was doing, then I could do a whole panel and a half. So sometimes to mix things up, instead of doing the same, um, same cat twice, I would do one cat and then a half of a cat of the next one. So I kind of kept track and then there was a time when I did um, two cats of each. So I made two of these and I gave one away and they're the heirloom ornaments done by Deb Mott Hall, M Moffett Hall, excuse me. And um, then I made two of these and I gave one to my mother. This one's just a little bit longer than the other one. but. Um, and it's got the silver ball behind it so this was really fun to do and I think if you're gonna learn how to do peyote stitch beading you should try her um, her patterns they're awesome and let's see if I can find them again I think I've done this twice <laughs> so um, must be in this one yep here we are. so her patterns are like these okay so you're getting this and I haven't done that one yet but I have all of and in case you haven't noticed I keep my peyote beading um, stitches into binders and I have three binders here that I'll show you so in each binder I have the pattern and with her patterns it's really cool they look like you know this one and it's very um step by step it's really her patterns are awesome you learn a lot from her patterns so other patterns you get this okay so in order to figure out what row you're working on because these are um there's an even stitch and an uneven stitch and i will explain that later but this is an uneven row, excuse me, row, not stitch. So you have an even row and an uneven row. And the odd row is easier to work with, in my opinion. 
I'm going to learn, I'm not going to learn, I'm going to do the even row on my snowman, which I'll show you later. So anyway, with these, I write out, I write out my own um, word, it's called a word chart, but there's no words to it. And it looks similar to this, because I go through, I take, all right, so when I have this, I take a piece of paper or whatever, and I hold it over there, and then I work my way down, and I write my word chart, because each row is different. And so with each row, then I work each row. So it takes a little bit to get started with her patterns, because she doesn't do the word charts. Excuse me. And most, most patterns that you buy um, will give you both a word chart and a pattern chart. Now the pattern charts are not my favorite. That's my earrings. So hold on. And I'll show you what I mean. So I bought, I had to buy a new pattern yesterday. So this is one of the patterns I bought. And the pink is supposed to be white. My printer wasn't working, so excuse that. And I always print out the word chart. So this part is the beads you need. So it tells you the beads you need and how many. Then on this, tells you, okay, let's see, there you go. So you can see it a little bit better. Tells you what row and what you need for that row. And that's what I use is the word chart. Now the pattern chart was the one I showed you previously with the ornaments where she shows you the pattern and then you have to figure out the word chart or you can just go off of the pattern, but I can't do that. And with big projects like my, um, my birds, the pattern chart was like three pages wide and several pages so I would have had this huge chart to work off to do one row to do a row you'd have to go across three of them and I to me it's not worth the hassle so this is the the wild birds winter wild wild birds that I had finished and um, hopefully you can get a good idea so see and those are all beads see the work in that so all that beadwork. Okay, so in doing this, I got a little loose when I started. I got a little tighter when I finished. And it's just like when you do knitting and crocheting. You tend to tighten up, you know, knitting, crocheting, when you learn, you're really tight and then you loosen up as time goes by. So I'm getting better. <laughs> and so it's going to be done. My next project after um, the polar bear, I haven't quite really decided though. I like that Minnie and Mickey. I bought that pattern and I'll show you what else I bought too. So then I bought another pattern yesterday and I really like this. Isn't that cool? So these patterns I get at Etsy and they're by, um, they're called the beading pattern. And she has some really cool designs, but most of hers are bracelets. And I have a Mickey bracelet that I bought yesterday, too. <laughs> hey, when it comes to Mickey and Minnie, I'm game. I get some of my patterns from um, Sherry's, Sherry's Country Time Crafts. She gives me the disc. I buy this on uh, eBay. I love her patterns. I bought two, maybe three of hers so far. One of them is the snowman, which is what I have set up to do next. And it's big. I mean, it's big. So that one will probably take me a year, just like the wild birds. But if you got to remember, with the wild birds, I was doing these. So I did four. Yeah, four ornaments last year. And then I also completed a couple of cross stitch projects and I did some quilting and stuff. So when you really think about it, I probably got it done in a good amount of time. Now this one 
is the one that I want to do next. See how thick that is? All of this, I'm pretty sure, yep, all of this is the snowman. So I have a long way to go. All right, so the snowman, and again, there's the colors. And more colors that I need for it. So over time, I, I bought a little bit, a little bit of beads at a time because beads are not cheap. And when you buy a huge amount, and then you have to pay sales tax or um, shipping, then it gets kind of frustrated. But that's probably why I like to go through Fire Mountain. At one time, Fire Mountain didn't charge me for shipping, but lately they're starting to charge me for shipping. So this is the pattern that I'm going to do next. Excuse the pink. My printer didn't print right, so um, it's supposed to be white, just like the uh, Minnie and Mickey patterns. They're supposed to be white. So these are, and then here's another one of. I've got the bridge that she has, so I've ordered. I got that pattern, and I love her patterns because she not only gives you the pattern, the word chart. The color chart she also gives you um, a little bit of instructions she shows you how she does her work um, and then a free item inside so it's well worth getting patterns from her but I would suggest that you be really good at doing beading in order to get her patterns because she does the even uh, the even rows not only that they're big projects they're not small projects they're even bigger than the winter wild birds that I just showed you and that was done by um, Georgia and the last name starts with G she's known as GG designs on Etsy um, she has patterns on eBay but I wouldn't buy them on eBay I would go to Etsy to buy them because if you get them on Etsy they're like two-thirds cheaper than you get them on eBay. I don't know why, but they are. So, okay. So as you notice, I have patterns and patterns of um, beading. Now these, this one is more of my ornaments and stuff, so. I have ornaments, short things. Um, I have I have the car. I was going to do this for my dad because that was his favorite car. I may do it yet. Um, and then there's the peacock and the dove, which is this one. And at one time, you were able to get um, beaded patterns like this one, the Polar Express. And so in there, their patterns are just a little bit more complicated as far as the rows go, because when you're looking at it, you have, there's a row and then there's a row and there's a row. So you're working your way down, where now, like the Polar Bear, I have my rows going across. So what I do, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. Um, people were asking how I do this. So I have, which I'm putting back together, I have this, which helps me to do each row. And I do a row at a time. So on one row, I may have two lines. So I do it twice. When I was doing the wild birds, the winter wild birds, I had five rows, sometimes six rows, um, not rows, excuse me, um, five lines. So then I would do one line at a time. I'd count them. I'd count my, my paperwork. Okay, they matched up. Okay, I could put it on. So that's where that had gotten, um, gotten going. So I started... And I did another, I did a video um, that I didn't like, so I'm redoing it. So anyway, at this point, I am doing um, 
polar bear panel peyote stitch. So this is my um, my polar bear. And I have his picture here somewhere. Oh, it's on the bottom of all those <laughs> all those workbooks. So I'll show it to you later. So anyway, this is how far I've gotten. I'm on to row 24. It, it, it's an odd, odd row, which means that there's an odd number going across. Even rows are where, see like on this one, you see this last bead is up. It would be the same over here. See, you noticed I, I started the row, so I've got two of them on there. So I already have two I added to it, see? Anyway, when I get to this end, it'll be down. It won't be up. So this bead won't be there. Actually, let me show you. I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Because I put those in trying to show you on my last video what, what I do. And um, then I didn't like the video. So I went and took care of a few things. So I'm going to take these out. Alright. So an even, an even row, uh, excuse me, an uneven row or an odd count is this. So it's down. When you start, you're doing two rows at a time. So in all patterns, it will say row one and two, and it will give you exactly what you need. And then you tighten it up, and then it, it starts to look rickety-racky. Okay, so this is where I started. So then I worked my way across, and then I came back and worked my way across. So this is my... For you, this is the top of my piece, okay? For me, it's the back side. All right, so if I flip it over, I'm on the beginning. So that means I'm on the odd, <laughs> can't remember, an odd number, even number. So I'm on an even number. And a way to um, count them is count them sideways. So if you want to know what row you're on, you take one of these and then you count you count across each row so you're going to count each row but you're going to count it this way and then you know exactly what row you're on so anyway all right so see how that's down oh it didn't show it there you go see how that's down that's an even um an odd row an even row would have both of them, both sides, with, whoops, wrong side. Both of them would have this at both ends, okay? So when you have that, then you have to do some extra stitching around at the end when you're done with the row to come back and do the next row. So it's going to take you just a little bit longer to do. And with this... Um, I use, and I'll show you, um, I use the magic thread, there we go, magic thread, and it's looking pretty nasty, but I use it, I use that on cross stitch, and then I came over and use it for this, I use my thread, so this is the thread I use, and it is Nymo, excuse me, Nymo thread, white, that's D, so it's D and this works really good and it and it's actually I really like it it's better than the other ones that I've tried um, but each to their own because everybody likes something different with this then I take a piece that's you know um, probably yay long but you can't see how yay long is but anyway I take a long piece and then I take this and I do it twice to make sure because this thread will ravel and it's a pain in the butt when it ravels and it's really hard to rethread. So I'm going to rethread this because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. So as I'm rethreading this and usually because you're being watched, you can't, but I did. Okay. So my needles my needle is 3 inches long. 
It's a John James needle, which I like. It's a beading needle that's three inches long. Um, I found that I enjoy those better. Then I have another needle that's um, probably an applique needle, quilt needle. And then I have a quilt needle, which is right here. And I'll show you. And in case you haven't noticed, they bend. When you're working with beads, they bend. Um, I have another one. And then I have another one. These are really badly bent. But I, I use them anyway. Um, I use them like this one that's really well bent is probably going to go in my um, discard. I have broken three <laughs> when I was working on the winter birds. So you do go through needles, actually. All right, so when I do this, I, I'm i going to be on the, the down part on an odd count. So, and on this row, I need two black. It says 2C. And I, to be honest with you, um, word charts are different. Some word charts have letters, and some word charts have the numbers. And when you get the numbers, it tells you how many of that number you need. That is probably the best word chart they have out there. The other word charts say you need 2A, you need 2C. So what I end up doing is that I write on, well, here, I'll use this thing. I have little stickers about this size, right? I wonder if it's going to, come on. So on there, and it's not going to show you. So I write on this. And in this case, it was G1818. The 1818 is the bead number, the DB bead number, Delica Beads. And then the G is the number that I have to work on. So then I take, and I'll show you, and some of this is scattered all over, but I will show you my, my station. So excuse me for just a second. So this is my station, ah, come on, and this is what it looks like. So I have my, my beads there that I'm going to use, and I have my beads laid out in numbers right there, okay? All right, so when I'm doing this, I'm going to read my chart, it's going to tell me 2C, so I'm going to put 2C down, and then I'm going to go across that whole line take out each one that I need, or two or three, and line them up. Once I have them all lined up, I count them, and then I count my row, and I make sure that they match. If they don't match, then I go back to figure out which one I'm missing. Okay, so and then I get that. Once all of that is done, I pick up a bead, and I didn't do that, so I'm just gonna pick up the next bead. I know I need two black. So. I have my needle with my bead on it. See the bead? Okay. And I'm going to take and go through the first bead in that, that next row. I don't know if you can see that or not. Come on. There we go. Well, except, here we go. Let's try this. So see, I've gone through the bead. And then I'm going to pull it through. And I want to make sure that it's tight. So I kind of pull a little bit. Every once in a while you'll hear a snap. And the snap is when the bead snaps in between the two below. You don't want your bead kitty corner. Because then it loosens it up. And when you come through it's kind of a pain. And I've had a couple of them where they twisted. And I didn't realize it. And instead of taking out the whole row to get to where it twisted. I just worked that. And then I had to go down, around to where I could tighten it down better and then come back up and continue on. And that seems to be more of a pain. So if, if all else, try not to do that. So then once you've got the first bead on, you're gonna go to the next bead. And you're gonna put it through just like that. Oh, cool, it was in there for a minute. Let's see if we can get it to do it again. Okay, so you're going to have it go through the next bead. And you're going to pull tight. And sometimes it gets twisted or whatever. So see, now you're on your, your next row and it's going to look like that. So the next number is in. So I'm going to go get one in. 
Bam. Excuse me a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to add it to the next one on the row. Trying not to pick from the row below. And you put it on, just like that. So, and then it fell out. That's fun. Okay. Sometimes when I'm going at it and I pick a bead, the next thing I know, I have picked my um, mat and my beads go flying. And that's kind of what happened when, and I think you can see it in the videos that um, some of my beads are in together. And I have to fix that and that usually takes quite a while. So anyway, and you continue on the row. Then you turn around and you come back the other way. Odd peyote bead stitches or rows are awesome. They're easy. You just keep going. When they're even, then it's more trouble because you have to do a little bit more work at the end to get it to go. Beads are expensive. If you're going to do a big project and, you, and you're just starting out, it's expensive. In my case, I did a little bit at a time. I bought the smaller stuff for my ornaments, and then I picked up, then I bought more beads that would go with the wild birds. And if I knew I could get away with one right now and then order the other one next, I would. So when I first started out, it was expensive. Now it's not so expensive because I'm picking up beads as I'm going. So I'm not spending as much money as I would. Plus, what beads you don't use in that project, a lot of times is called in another project. And you have some and you don't need to buy near as much as you did the first time. So it's not all that bad at times. So, excuse me, I have to take a drink. <laughs> Love my mug. Anyway, oh, I forgot to show you this side. My daughter gave it to me. So anyway, so beading gets to be um, time consuming, but it's fun. And if you enjoy what you're doing, then it's worth it. Um, you know, I don't go out to the bar. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a sociable person. I we pretty much stay home most of the time so this stay at home order is not bad for me because I've got enough stuff to do I can do quilting I can do cross stitch I can do beading I can do you know crochet knitting I can do anything I want and I and I pretty much enjoy it but it's gotten to the point where I do miss my friends and I do miss sitting around the table and laughing about things that we've talked about or things that we've done. So I think when all of this is over, we're going to be laughing about the different things that have gone on while we've had to stay home with our husbands. <laughs> um, unfortunately, a friend of mine had to work, so she's working through this thing and, and I don't know why she is, but she is. So if, you really enjoy doing cross stitch and if you enjoy doing knitting and crocheting beading is along that line it's fun it's time you know um it takes time but i enjoy doing it people say you have to have patience no you don't have to have patience you have to have the mindset of that you want to do it you think that that's interesting you want to try it there are things i've tried that I don't particularly care for um, knitting. It, no, not knitting. Quilting is one of them. Um, I've done it for years with, because my mother had done it. I think, I think I always in that mindset of I had to do it because it's a family tradition. I have a daughter that doesn't want anything to do with quilting. She doesn't want anything to do with a lot of crafts, but she is good at art. So she does art. And I'm happy with her for doing what she does. I'm not going to force her to learn how to do all these things that I've that have come down through the generations. I can't do that. So, and it's like embroidery. I love to sit and do embroidery. I don't do a lot of it. I do it more with my friends when we have our meeting because I enjoy doing that. But I tend to 
want to do more cross stitch or needlepoint and I haven't done needlepoint in years so I really have been itching to do that so beading is one thing I've always wanted to do and if it's something you've always wanted to do learn to do it um, you can learn anything anytime in your lifetime it's fun it's exciting um, I like beading and it's kind of fun it's almost like you know how when you're doing a um, what do you call it um, thing out of the knitting the Irish knitting you know the tweet <laughs> and all of a sudden I can't remember I knew it in the other video when I did it but I can't think of it anyway but when you're doing that knitting and you're getting ready to do the twist you're waiting to see what's gonna happen and then you go down a little bit further and you do another twist and you can't wait to see the two twists to see what's going on or if you're doing the cross um, the cross part then you can't wait to get to that point that is kinda what beading is this is my um, polar bear and I can't wait to start working on my polar bear he's due here pretty soon I know somewhere in here he's gonna show up I know he's coming and I can't wait to get to him so when I get to him then I'm gonna be going oh I can't wait to get his face done oh I can't wait to get his body done so it's just like cross stitch when you're doing cross stitch oh I can't wait to get to that flower oh cool that flower is you you just have to have the right mindset in order to be able to do this it has nothing to do with patience well it kind of does a little bit but even if you're you know I mean it it relaxes you 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 can enjoy doing this so I hope this video was informative and that you got an idea what I do um, as I told you I do <laughs> I do a ton of stuff. I miss my friends. I hope everybody's staying safe. Um, you know, this is a time where life is going to change. And I'm almost thinking that my friends are going to end up being YouTube friends because I can't see anybody else. I just kind of wish I could talk to them. Um, and I do on the phone. But that's kind of different too. So anyway, let's see if I can... Nope. It's under a whole pile. I'm not going to dig. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that all of you are ha being safe. That you're healthy. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Washing your hands. You know, cleaning. As you can tell, my washer's going. When I'm done with this, I'm going to go wash my hands. Um, may end up having to wash my face. And I keep putting my cream on because I got rosacea. So, you know, I mean... Phew, we all have our problems, but we're home and we're safe and hopefully we can stay that way. So God bless you and I hope that each and every one of you are safe and happy and thank you to all the ones that are out there working when I can't and I pray that you don't get it. So take care and um, see you next time.